guys? Um, talking about Reddit. And... Yeah. Not the camera's live. All right. Don't say anything dumb, guys. All right. Let me put this stuff away. Well, I'm gonna... I'm gonna leave. Oh! Got it. Nice save. All right, I'm gonna load up, and I'll meet you over by Priya. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, just make sure you take the house off with you. Well, and I can't go... Um, are you taking your backpack? Or are you leaving your backpack? No, I'm leaving. Okay, we put that in there, please. And uh, I can't go behind the barricade, so we'll wait and see. I'm just gonna... Oh, without me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody. For those of you watching, hang on one second. All right. Perfect. Yeah, my five holder. There we go. Mm-hmm. Watch it falls in the puddle. <laughs> like my phone did last week. I know my phone. Alright, I'm gonna go grab a radio and I will see you over by Priya. Cool? Okay. Alright. You okay? Alright. Hi guys. If any of you are commenting, I do not have a phone to look at that. So give us a minute. We got a little bit of a late start this morning. Um, so we're working on getting ourselves situated. So I apologize for the delay. Mm. It's nine o'clock. Okay. Whoa. So, we're gonna hang out here over by Priya for a minute and see. I don't know where she is, but once, uh, once Andy gets back, we'll go ahead and get started. And again, if any of you are commenting, I am sorry, I do not have, um, a way to see your comments yet so hope we'll get all caught up um we're just kind of getting started here this morning because it's been kind of we got kind of a late start so we had to rush to get ourselves prepped and ready to go so um i got oh there he is there's andy just yoink Coming out of food prep there. He's got the guy, he's the guy with the comments. So once uh, once he gets here, we can look in and see if there are any questions or comments that we've got going on just yet. Lots of good mornings. Lots of good mornings. Okay, of good, mornings. good stuff. Hey, Cynthia's watching. Nice. So's Deb. Deb's watching. Go figure. <laughs> All right. Uh, that tripod doesn't have the tilty bit on it, so I'm just gonna go up there. Okay, well, I'm. Um, you wanna go see some, uh, see some cats? Yeah, let's go. Let's go check out some cats. I'm gonna give this to you. I'm gonna get myself situated. <clears throat> this here. Situate yourself. Hi, hey, look. Good morning. Those crazy people. Who's talking about you? I've seen you in forever. Oh, I like your hat. All right. That was Angie. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I couldn't hear. Yeah, now I hardcore so. have Panama by Van Halen stuck in my head. You are welcome for that. Oh, jeez. Yeah, we listened to some Van Halen this morning on the way uh, while we were sitting at the front gate waiting to get in. I would have ourselves up. Would much rather <laughs> still had the Roy Kent chant stuck in my head. No, Panama. Roy Kent. Stop it! I got it. I played Panama to get that out. No, it's it's never leaving. Oy. Don't make it my problem. That's a you problem. Oh no, now it's a you problem. No, I'm gonna stick with Panama yeah. by Van Halen. Hey, it's that or Lamb Chop, take your pick. Stop. Yeah, we're gonna do this. We're gonna continue last week's conversation of songs that just get stuck in your head. Irritating songs, not just regular songs, irritating songs. Ah, oh, Missy, we wish you could've stopped by too. Hopefully someday we'll bring tours back. Missy was driving by. Hopefully you stopped and we saw the sign out from. Okay. <clears throat> hey, take get rescue, take a better photo or something. 
Oh, hello. What are you doing? Really? Hi. Hi, Chuffy girl. <laughs> are you going to go see him? All right. So this is Duchess. She's getting a drink of water right now. So we'll say hi to her. Hi, Dutch. Oh. Now, Duchess just recently had breakfast. And so she is hanging out in what we call her roofed section because she has a water bowl in her open air section that we need to clean before we can let her out. And the reason that we lock her in um, is because we need to stick our hands into her enclosure. Um, and so in order to do that safely, we lock her away from that space. And then once that bowl has been cleaned, we are able to let her out into her open air section. Oh, Deb is terrible this morning. She actually typed this out. No, says, no, no. No? If it's a song that's gonna get stuck in my head, I don't want it. Right, Barney is dead. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I'm going with Panama. I'm sticking with Panama or the other classic Journeys Don't Stop Believing. Sherry, I don't know Tiki 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 Bird. What you doing, Duchess? <laughs> what? Did you have a good breakfast? Yeah, Lisa, Deb's bringing it up. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you going in there? <laughs> Hi, silly. Ooh. 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 <laughs> All right, I'll catch up with you in a minute. I'm going to see the girl next door. <laughs> what? What? What are you saying? <laughs> All right, let's go see if Priya's around. <sighs> Sherry, not cool. Not. No, uh. Okay, let's see. I think there's. I there is a Priya. Priya, Priya. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> What's that? Good morning. Hi. Ah, good. Yes, hydrate. It has been very hot here in Tampa, Florida at Big Cat Rescue. And I am glad to see these two girls both having some water because hydration is essential. Every single cat on property has several water bowls that are cleaned and refilled with fresh water every single day. What? And so that is one of the several jobs that our keepers do every day is that they come in, they feed our cats, and then after breakfast, food gets, if and there's any food left, it gets collected, it gets weighed, um, it potentially gets logged, and then are you done? What are you doing? Oh, there she goes. She's heading out to the ginormous section that is her lock, that is her enclosure. 
And there she goes. She's determined there's nothing on the end of that stick. Yeah, no, she knows there's nothing on the end of the stick. Um, <laughs> but each day our keepers uh, take care of feeding, cleaning up after feeding, and then they will um, come back and they'll start cleaning the enclosures, cleaning feeding slabs, water bowls, and then looking for poop. And then all of those things are the things that we do Barbie. every day. Barbie, why do you worry about the alligators? No alligators here. We don't have any access to alligators. They cannot climb our walls because we have either PVC or uh, cement, concrete walls. And we do not have any... Um, oh, that, that does not work. Waterways. We don't have there any connecting go. waterways. Woo. All right. So no, uh, no alligators. No alligators in on property whatsoever. Now we do have snakes and turtles and, and birds. What are you doing? Snakes and turtles and birds. Um, oh my. <laughs> exactly. Oh my. But um, we don't have, we don't have any alligators, which is a very nice thing because that's just one less thing we need to worry about. So as per our norm, let's go ahead and get a beautiful view of Tiger Lake in the morning, which is one of my favorite things to look at. Turn you guys around here. Urgh, fix the camera. Man, I messed that thing up good. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, cool. The tripod bottom wants to come off. Right, so we had a question. What's the question? Um, how many types of big cats in our zoo? Uh, first and foremost, um, as people have responded, this is in fact not a zoo, this is a sanctuary. We are a member of the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries, which is also known as GFAS. This is uh, an important accreditation for us. It means that we do not buy, breed, touch, sell, or trade any of our cats. Uh, the cats that come to Big Cat Rescue, this is their retirement home. They stay here forever. Um, I'm trying to count how many different species we have. Here, I'm gonna ask you to hold that while I do a I count. Think only two. Big cats and little cats. <laughs> ones that eat a lot and ones that don't. Uh, no, let's see, we have Bobcat, we have Serval, we have Caracal, we have hybrids, we have leopard, jaguar, tiger, lion, lynx. Oh, Marcy. I think that's nine. I think we have nine different species of exotic cat here at Big Cat Rescue. Right. Just double check, that's bobcat, serval, caracal, lynx, hybrid, Leopard, Jaguar, Tiger, Lion. I think nine, yeah, nine nine yeah. different species. Yeah, one of, the, one of the biggest differences between what we do here as a sanctuary and a zoo, and I think one of the biggest differences between us and a lot of places is um, is, is that whole touching thing. Right? It's that GFAS um, accreditation. Yeah, it really is. And, and, you know, not buying, breeding, touching, or selling. Um, or, trading. Cat, or trading. Or uh, trading our cats is, is super important because this is a sanctuary. Uh, a lot of people don't understand the definition of that, but when it comes to sanctuary, this is meant to be a peaceful place for them to live out the rest of their lives. Um, yeah. And yep. uh, and today, my not no my friend no longer is going to be Marcy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Marcy, don't listen to him. <laughs> no, every, every, he every, talks a good game, but he's good. harmless. You know, um, she she, re she referenced that ever repeating song from Disney with the mm, small puppets. Yes. Yeah. Um, moving on. Uh, so I think typically the way I like to the way I like to describe Big Cat Rescue is that we allow these cats simply to just be cats. Uh, we don't force them to do anything. Uh, we don't ask them to do tricks. We're not breeding them at all. Um, oh, I can take this off right now or take this down because I'm far enough away from cats. Seriously, um, st stand up straight. 
Good luck with that. Where's my other tripod? I don't know, sweetie. Where is your other tripod? I don't know. I, ever since we got back from our trip, I can't find it, aren't they? Did you leave it in in Rochester? I may have. I don't think I did. I didn't use it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Whichever. Um, anyway, so the important thing to is that we the important thing about Big Cat Rescue and, and one of the things that I love most about what we do here is that we just let these cats be cats. We let them um, kind of just do what they're going to do. We let them lounge. We don't ask them to perform. We um, just give them their breakfasts. We let them be who they're going to be. They're going to play. If they want to be playful, they can be playful. Um, if they want to play with their toys, they can play with their toys. If they just want to kind of sleep the day away, they can sleep the day away. Um, so we're allowing these cats to do what makes them most comfortable. Um, there's no way, there's no at point in time when they need to be on or performing um, or being bred or anything like that. It is just simply spending time in the most natural environment that we can provide for them, which is the outdoors in Central Florida. Um, so. Yeah, so uh, what else? Uh, do we tell them about our new thing or are we gonna wait till the end for that one? We'll talk about it in a little bit. All we right. didn't really determine anything yet. We got a new thing, stick around. We're gonna talk about it a little bit. Um, but uh, ah, yes, Kim, that is a great point. We are also a rehabilitation facility for native Florida bobcats. So yes, we are a sanctuary, but we also work on rehabilitating uh, native Florida bobcats. So if anybody gets, um, if anybody gets, I'll put you in charge of the comments or questions. Um, if anybody comes across a um, an abandoned or injured bobcat that is native to the state of Florida, they can reach out to us and we will help them um, by coming to get that bobcat. We will bring the bobcat here to our facility, our rehabilitation facility on site, and then we will work to get that bobcat old enough, well enough, fit enough, whatever, what have you, whatever those variables may be, um, to the point where we can release them back into the wild. And in order to do that, we work closely with uh, the Florida Fish and Wildlife, um, FWC, and then we also have to make sure that these cats can pass a test. And the test is vitally important to their survival because the test basically consists of them being able to hunt, capture, kill, and consume live prey. It is the only place on property where we do feed live prey, but it is, again, vitally important that these cats understand the concept of live prey because when they go back out into the wilds of the state of Florida, they have to be able to survive. The wilds of Florida. Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tracy asked about cheetahs. Daniel answered it four times. Uh, thank Great. you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. No, we do not have any cheetahs here um, for so many reasons. Yeah. Um, so they don't they don't no, do some, well in yeah, in there's, captivity there's, there's no real good way to answer that they it's, don't do well in captivity um they need a lot of space to run um thankfully they don't do well in captivity i i don't i don't know it just sounds bad but um yeah so with cheetahs cheetahs need a lot of space um they need to be able to run that's part of that's part of their livelihood they have to burn all those calories off um that's not i guess uh well i guess we do have space but i People don't typically get them as pets, I guess is one thing to put in there. People are interested in, you know, you know, can I go out and pet a tiger? Can I go out and, you know, pet a cub? And, um, yeah. you know, when it comes to cheetahs, it's, man, it's just, such a weird topic. You know? I just don't know enough about cheetahs to answer that question. So if yeah. Deb wants to speak about it or can answer, or if Daniel has answered properly, I'm just going to leave it at that, um, and we're going to move on from here because yeah. you're... There's not many cheetahs to rescue. There. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, I guess I, I guess that'll work. Um, here, let me take many... that so you can manipulate this. There's not many cheetahs to rescue. Ah, all right. Sorry, guys. I'm going to... Struggle monsters hit me with the camera this morning. All right, so... We want to do little cats first or big cats first? Are we going to, are we going to reserve big cats for YouTube? Oh, let's do big cats. Let's do little cats first. Little, little cats let's and then... Let's do small cats. Oh, shoot. I closed that. At 1030, we'll do uh, big cats. Yes. So, if you are here because you really want to see tigers, 
um, hang out with us. That's going to be a 1030 on YouTube. Yeah, get to know us. We'll get to know you. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got some new people here, which is exciting. We love having new people. Pretty sure. Love having. Big thing of bird food. No, it looks like tree debris. Yeah. Okay. Um, we love getting to know you. We love the, that you want to get to know us. Um, so hang out with us. We will, we will happily answer questions. We love questions. Um, yes. Questions, comments, concern, everything's welcome. The floor is wide open. Even questions that you might go, hey, I'm new. This might seem kind of, uh, you know, like a dumb question. Ask it. Uh, there's a lot of people in here that can ask them. And Bridget and I do have one big rule, though. When dumb questions come up or questions that seem dumb or like, hey, do you pet cats? Or, you know, can we cuddle with them or something like that? Don't attack them, guys. Don't attack them. You yep. all asked that stuff in the beginning as well. Yep. So let's Let's help. share the education. Let's talk. Let's be polite, respectful. Yeah, yeah. And let's, you know, share the knowledge that we have. Um, so please feel free. We love, we love questions. We will tolerate any particular question. We don't yeah. like. Yeah, reason. Yeah, we're, we're not big fans of, you know, being disrespected. But please, by any stretch, if you have questions that are respectful or you're just curious or you're not quite sure how things like this work, Feel free to ask them. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, I had something there and I just forgot. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's, 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 it's all good. Okay. Um, yeah, so anyways, fire away with whatever you have. It's 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 totally cool. So I think... Uh, yeah, be respectful. Take a look at be class. respectful with your questions. Be respectful with your answers. And uh, let's just try to make the world a peaceful place today. Because I think we could all use a little bit of that. So Yeah, we could. All right. So yes. we're going to flip the camera around. We're going to see some cats. I'm going to put my... Uh, I'm gonna put my buff up because we're getting we're gonna start seeing some cats. Well, you're already buff. I am. Buff. Look at those arms. I'm buff. Lifting all that lumber. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you that have never met Andy or myself, a uh, couple of things about us. Uh, he and I are married. We have been married for almost 14 years now. Um, we've been volunteering since 2015. I think I think we've been volunteering since 2015. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, Marcy, well, we'll see you a little bit later. Let's she, see. She can't stay. Oh, Marcy, we'll miss you. Have a great day. Uh, feel free to join us at 10:30 if you're available. Um, wow, you are you are glowing standing there. I can see myself. You are. Um, it's weird. Beacon of light at your um, big cat rescue. Andy and I both work uh, day jobs, so this is just volunteer positions for us. Um, and again, we've been volunteering since about 2015. Um, so yeah, now that's about that's enough about us. Not let's, sure about you. All right, let's, let's go, go see some cats. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So since uh, you know, good old Delta variants out there, Bridget and I are going to be masked up um, because tigers can get COVID. Yep. Even though we're not going to see tigers, it's just best to keep all of the cats as safe as possible. I should have put that in the beta test request. Cats can get COVID. All right, where's Tudders? I'm looking for him. He may be over in this bubble. Hey, Tudderoni. Let's see. Uh, Barbie wants to know when you get your next shirt. Oh, it's going to be well over a year. Yeah, that's kind of. Before I get my next shirt. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a while. I'm going to stay green it's shirt like this, uh, simply because, I don't know. That's about it for you. I, 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 well, yeah, I mean, if I if I get a Navy shirt for partner, I wouldn't really, wouldn't really change my responsibilities. And I think I look better in the color green. So. <laughs> there you are. Hey, oh, Barbie. yeah, absolutely, Barbie. Um, all right, so Barbie wants us to do like a little sign tour here. Hi. Hunters. Let me make the drive out shorter. Hi. What are you doing? You just hanging out here in the in the tall grass? Hey, Tut. Hey, man. <laughs> what's going on? He's like, hey, what's on that? Is that something for me? That's not for you. So this is King Tut. He is one of our hybrids, as I mentioned. Um, I just need to answer this. No, that's fine. <laughs> um, so this is King Tut. He is one of our hybrids. And Tut has been living here with us for several years now. 
This is the starting point. What's that? The queen was. No, nope, that wasn't. That's a tiger. Oh, tiger. That was a tiger call. Um, so. King Tut goes by uh, a couple different nicknames or monikers. Uh, usually it's Tutters or Tutty. Um, tut Tut. Tut Tut. Um, I like to call him Tutteroni. <laughs> tut in common. So Tut's, one of Tut's favorite things to do is just to hang out. He's, he likes to, um, he loves attention as far as people like fawning over him but he does not he does not like to be touched at all um, and he really likes being outside he also likes long walks on the beach <laughs> champagne bubble baths um, so right now we're gonna be seeing our small cats we're gonna go see um, some more exotic cats some more exotic small cats um, we'll go head over and see if we can find uh, some of our bobcats if you're looking for our bigger exotic cats, hang out with us. Um, or if this is not your jam, you can join us at 1030. We will go ahead and post a link to the uh, next walkabout. Oh, it's already in the chat. Oh, it's already in the chat. Well, the, the link to dailybigcat.com is, but okay. I'll put a direct link once we get closer to it. Yes. Um, okay, so we'll give you a direct link towards the end of this walkabout um, so you can see our tigers and our lion and um, our leopard and our bigger cats. Um, so if you are excited about the big cats, you're welcome to join us at 10.30. Right now we're going to see some of our smaller cats. See you, buddy. Look at, them Look at them hiding down there. Just as fun. Just walking by, you wouldn't even spot them. Yeah, he does do a good job of, like, hanging out in his tall grass. Okay, so King Tut actually didn't have a name when he came to us. Um, it was uh, decided upon by several of our volunteers when he arrived. Uh, typically when the cats come to us though, they do already have names. So we keep their names unless of course the name is the exact same name of a cat of the same species that is already living on property. So for example, uh, at one point in time, we had a tiger named Keisha and um, we loved Keisha very much. And then we had another tiger that we brought on property. Her name was also Keisha. Uh, so we changed her name just to Tisha. We have two cats that have the same name, actually two sets of two cats. We have two Simbas and two Maxes on property. The difference is, is that they are a different species. So when we need to talk about them, we can reference them by their species. So we can say Max Tiger or Max Bobcat yeah. or Simba Hybrid or Simba Tiger. When we have people with the exact same name and their exact same species, that's when we need to kind of fudge it a little bit, just so that way we can make sure that we are able to understand who's talking about whom. If you have a radio call and you need your coordinator to come to somebody, this way they know who they can come to. Mmm, it's nice back here. Yeah. Glad I have these boots without tread on them. Well. <laughs> My treadless boots. Your they, treadless wellies? Hey, they work. They're just like, you know, I mean, don't expect me to run through the mud. Well, I'm not going to ask you to run ever because well, I know. you don't run here. Or maybe I could like slide through it. <laughs> oh, I totally can. Totally can. Yeah, be careful, please. Yeah. Hey, I found a Loki. Where's, where's Mr. Grumpy? I don't know. He's not yelling at kids to get off his lawn. <laughs> Loki there! Hi, kiddo! Oh, there he is. He's under his platform. We'll say hi to Loki. Hi, Loki. Hi! We won't get too close. I know that makes you a little nervous, so we'll just stay right over here. Hey, Loki! <laughs> This is Loki. He's another one of our hybrids. I know I told you guys that we, uh, I, I know I told you that we would um, be seeing some more exotic cats. <laughs> Loki's like, mm, I'm not sure how to make, what to make of this. Uh, but Loki is one of our shyer cats. And so it's nice to see him out and about. I'm not sure he's really feeling that thing though. He's curious. He's not, he's not like hissing at it or scared of it. So. His ears have gotten a little bit flat. Yeah, 
he seems to really, he seems to like this space. Oh, okay, we're okay. done now. We're and done. And there we go. We're done. Okay, thanks, Loki. Let's move along. There's a grumpy boy. So underneath this platform here is um, one of our senior bobcats uh, named Running Bear. And he is definitely one of our older gentlemen. And... <laughs> he is sack Yeah, out. he's definitely having a nap after breakfast. Now we do have another bobcat that's out and about. This is Mrs. Claus. And as we were talking about earlier in the walkabout, we have a bobcat rehabilitation program. Now Mrs. Claus came with her brother, Mr. Claus, uh, right around Christmas several years ago. Uh, let me get this camera situated. There we go. Now I can... Her brother, fortunately, was able to be released. However, she could not pass the test. Hi, Beach. Okay. Hey, man. And another hybrid. Whoa. Um, so Mrs. Claus was unable to pass the test, and so she lives with us here at Big Cat Rescue. My goodness. What is going on? You do not like Beaches. that Beecher boy, do you? Mrs. She is growling at Beecher. Wow. Okay. You are not happy to see Beecher out, Mrs. are you? Mrs. So you can hear there are different vocalizations for each cat. Mrs. Claus is quite upset that her neighbor is out. Hi, Beach. Beach, Beach. 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 So, what's the report? How's things going over here? <laughs> He's like, I've said all I need to say. You didn't get it on camera. Too bad. I know. Oh my goodness. She is just talking. She is super perturbed about Beecher. She doesn't seem to mind him. Well, not usually. Today she's like, that dude. Getting all the attention. He got smellier food than me. He did get fish this morning. Ooh, that might be why. You want some fish? Missy is. She's going to make her way around again. Missy is. Oh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep moving along here. <laughs> She's obviously perturbed about something. See you, Beach. Beecher's having a salad course of the day. Well, one of many. Beecher says, eat your greens. <laughs> There's actually huge chunks of that plant that are missing stalks. Yeah. Anything good going on in the comments? Uh, um, no. No? Nothing good? People are just chatting. We're talking. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's see who else we can find. Well, it looks like we might have somebody back here. like this on regular on multiple occasions regularly so this isn't a new thing for her i think after breakfast she just likes to have a chat hi frank hi frank hi frankie oh karen that is a great example of why bobcats do not make good pets hi frankie Mrs. Claus is a perfect example of that. Hi, Frankie. 
Frankie. Frankie is another bobcat that likes to make a lot of socializations or vocalizations. I'm sorry. He likes to make a lot of vocalizations. <laughs> Dude's got a quite a network. He's all hooked up. <laughs> he can make two phone calls and next thing you know, somebody's He's building contact. Somebody's dropping him off a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> he is socialized. It's possible that Mrs. Claus was upset with Andy. Um, yeah, probably. She usually growls when I'm around. Yeah, he, and she's not really used to you because you don't feed her. Not That's not like a dig or anything, but as a person who's not a keeper, you're not... No, we're going, we're going down that path, huh? You're, really, you're not typically around for all the good stuff, so... Well, you're typically not a keeper, so, you know, just telling you to get off her lawn. Um, yeah, we... Beecher gets a... Um, Beecher gets a rotating diet. Uh, we have a log of things that cats do and do not like to eat. Uh, every cat has their own, like, chart, so to speak, which includes any uh, medical information we might need, their dietary preferences, if they need it, uh, if they need their meals cut up, um, that kind of thing. So we do give Feature things that we know he likes to eat, so that way he does, in fact, actually eat. I'm sorry, Barbie, what do you need to ask again? I may have missed your question. So if you had a question and I missed it, please feel free to ask again. It's Gilligan out. I don't know. Oh yeah, there he is. He's there on he by is. his rock wall. He's snoozing. Now you'll probably barely be able to see him, but over by that rock wall there, on the ground, is a Gilligan. So he's so, going to be like right there-ish. Debbie, um, bobcats actually do have short tails in that they're not a full-length tail like you would see on like a leopard or a tiger. Um, but they may not necessarily be as short as some people think that they are. Um, oh, okay. Barbie wants to know if we replant the grass in his enclosure when he eats all the grass. I will answer that question in just a second, Barbie. I saw it. I will answer it in just a second. Um, so bobcat's tails are in fact shorter than um, like a lion or a leopard or a tiger. Um, but they are kind of, I think they tend to be longer than sometimes people think. Um, they do vary in size too quite a bit. They do vary in you length know, like, depending on the cat. Like, uh, what's his face down there? Um, Nabisco? Nabisco. Yeah, he's no, 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 Nabisco. The, the other one. Flint. Called. Flint. Thank you. You know, Flint's got a long tail. Whereas, yeah. like Smalls has a small tail. Yeah, that's true. Um, Barbie, as far as the grass goes, um, we when we go into an enclosure when a cat is either on vacation or is locked away from a certain section, we do replant grass seed. It's just sometimes really tricky depending on um, the, the coverage, like the, 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 I don't want to call it the forest cover or the, the tree, the tree cover. There it is. Depends on the tree cover as to whether or not that grass grows well or fast. Um, so Beecher has like that tall sawgrass and we made sure when we moved him in there not to get rid of too much of that. Um, so that way he has a lot of it in his enclosure because we all knew he liked grass. Um, but we do keep an eye on those things. There's a joke in there. Great question. Um, the first cat, the first hybrid cat we showed, Diana, um, we're not exactly sure what hybrid he is simply because we didn't, we found him, um, as a stray. He was found as a stray. Tut, tut, right? Tut, yes. King Tut was found as a stray. So we're not exactly sure of his background or his origins or that kind of thing. Did you want to go around the back and see if we can find your girl? Um, let's go see these boys first. All right. See, I always thought Tut was part golden child. I mean, he just, <laughs> just kind of has that whole, like, this is my space. I'm pampered. I shine gold when the light hits me. You know, that, that sort of thing. Oh my God, I cannot get Panama out of my head. I now, tried. we did see Priya um, already this morning. Um, we saw her first thing, but we will see her again at our 10.30 walkabout, which we will post a link to um, 
We'll post yep. a link to that in the chat later on. And what else? Uh, the fundraiser for today. Ooh, almost forgot to mention it. Yeah, the fundraiser for today is our general fundraiser. Oh, hey, look, there's Angie. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, Angie. Good to with you. Uh, <laughs> All right, so the fundraiser for today is our general fundraiser, which goes to take care of pretty much everything here at the sanctuary. Are you gonna find, there's a oh. camp right here. What are you doing over there? Vinti! Vinti! Hey. Vinti! Vinti! What's up, dude? Hi. Look at him go. Oh boy. <laughs> um, I don't remember how old Gilligan is. Uh, if anybody has that information, um, He's an old boy. He's definitely an older gentleman. Uh, Catherine, as far as we are concerned, we do still, from what I'm aware of, although it's been a while since we've been taking calls because the gift shop is closed, um, we, do, we don't necessarily... I don't know if we've seen an increase or a decrease in hybridization. Um, unfortunately, I think people are still breeding them. I think the awareness is starting to happen, um, but I don't know. As long as people want them, they will still be bred, which is a messed well, up thing. And as long as, as long as lies are still being told about what they are and where they come from, um, and their and their personalities, I think um, that that they will continue to be bought and sold. Look at that tail! Look at that tail go! I believe we had a donation. I apologize that I missed your donation. You're the best, thank um, you. Thank you for your donation. Remember, everything that you donate goes directly back to the cats. Yep. We are a 501c3, and uh, I think once a year, maybe once a quarter, I, I don't know which, either Howard or Carol post all the financial stuff online so you guys can see we have complete transparency. Um, Everything's on our website too. So if you yeah. go to bigcatrescue.org, you can see our financial information. We're very transparent about that. Yep. We don't have these cats to make money off of them. Like, you know, roadside zoos that have recently become incredibly famous that thankfully has also shut down and hopefully will never ever reopen. Um, so yeah, these guys, it's, it's a sanctuary, right? It's supposed to be a peaceful place for these guys. Uh, sometimes they spray because they like you. Sometimes they spray because they're marking their territory. Um, typically, when a cat shows you its rear end, it is a sign that they are comfortable near you because that is one of their most vulnerable spots. Um, they... Hey, my butt. <laughs> oh. oh, slippery. See? Oh man, see see how quick these guys are? Yeah. One minute, super cute and cuddly. The next minute. Oh yeah, I think it's. I think it's okay. If anything, kitty. Nope, everything's good. You <laughs> are adorable. It's like you get that thing out of here. It's not the first time. All right, we're gonna go see your neighbor or your 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 buddy because he's our. Oh, there he is. Hi, Beefy. Look at you being all cute. Biscuits like in my later teenage years here, um, in cat years, I like to lay around. <laughs> I'm lazy. If somebody gave me a Nintendo, I'd play it all day. <laughs> some Doritos would be real nice. Bring me some uh, some more catnip. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be good. Uh, Misty, hybrid cats are typically domestic cats that are bred with exotic cats like a caracal or a uh, an ocelot or a serval. Oh, you're gonna get me all wound up on that topic. But do, that's you, okay. do you want to talk about it? Yeah, sure. Um, hybridization is a an excuse for people to go ahead and get an exotic cat. To say that, well, you know, we have bred F5, um, you know, bobcats or F5 hybrids and they're completely domesticated is a load of stuff. And here's why. When you take a look at even your domestic house cat, your domestic house cat will get this crazy thing called the zoomies and then they'll attack, you know, just whatever. Mars Marzipan likes to uh, try to climb the walls, Holy literally smokes. trying to cut, yeah. climb the walls. Yeah, Marzipan, um, you know, will climb the walls to try. Um, she will just take off at like rocket speed down the hallways. I'm sure many of you have had cats and kittens that are like this. 
Imagine that cat with three times the body mass. That right? maybe, and maybe even more. the skills of an African hunting cat. Yeah, so let's say they were domesticated and they're three times the size. They're still gonna do a lot of damage. Now, let's put back on in that idea that they're, you know, part bobcat or part serval. Now they're gonna wanna attack things. Now they're gonna have bigger claws. Now they're gonna bite harder. Now they're going to pretty much do everything to a much higher degree. Um, and on top of that, when it comes to a hybrid, many people will get a hybrid, think, oh yeah, it's domesticated. It's gonna be just fine for me to take care of. And some people very rarely, you know, kind of do have luck with this, but it's gonna take a lot of dedication and far more than what the average person is gonna to want to put into it. Now we showed you Beecher a little bit ago. Beecher's a hybrid. He was purchased for, I think about $10,000 and then, or $15,000 and then the owner attempted really good just really tried and um you know went ahead and put on a fifteen thousand dollar or ten thousand dollar edition on her house uh, anyways feature cost a lot of money and she spent a lot of money and it didn't I pan think out she bought i think she bought him for fifteen thousand dollars spent an additional ten thousand either way she spent twenty five thousand dollars on the cat and the yeah. renovation of her home and he lives here with us yeah and thankfully she did the right thing she contacted us and and, uh, and when she realized that he wasn't working out, you know, turned him over. But even Beecher being declawed still beat the stuff out of, uh, I think, her boyfriend and daughter. So as far as hybridization goes, hybridization is not a good thing. I mean, your cat is thousands of years down the genetic line, and yet it still wants to tear things apart. I mean, our cats, when they get a lizard or a frog, holy Ugh. smokes, they growl, they hiss, they do everything that these guys do. You can't tell me that domestication happens within five generations yeah or 10 or 20 it, well, and it's, remembering it's all there. that even if it's a small exotic cat it's still an exotic cat so oh you yeah can't take the wild out of these cats and they they don't belong in people's homes or in cages imagine you know. imagine a little sand cat in the house oh my god holy smokes well first off all of her other cats would be eaten um in addition to that when these cats want to mark your territory and this is something i tell people a lot um they will mark their territory by, you know, the same way your regular cat does. Spraying. Spraying, marking your walls, that sort of thing. But they are only a few generations out of the wild. Now, this is one of the things that, that you just need to be aware of. Um, when they mark your wall, you gotta replace drywall. That stuff is incredibly potent. Yeah. We know, we know when a cat around here marks their territory simply Oof. because, oh my gosh, we can smell it. Yeah. Um, Simba's tree, Simba tiger's trees. So do yourself a favor, anybody that might be watching this and saying, hey, I'm thinking about getting a small exotic cat. We understand cute, cuddly, all that fun stuff, but they do grow up. They do become incredibly difficult to work with. And also, in the end, if you can't take care of it, the only sentient being that is out of happiness is the cat, right? The cat's the one that suffers. So go out, get yourself a sports car, go out, get yourself something, you know, stupidly expensive because that's what these guys are gonna cost. Sue Sue! Hi Sue! Sue Sue! <sighs> oh my goodness, Sue Sue! All right, so this is Sue's normal personality and temperament and vocalizations. She doesn't like you very much. Mm. Sue Sue! Sue Sue! Hi! Watch your butt. Yeah, I see. Hi, Coda Coda. No, don't put that on there. Don't touch it to the mouth. Coda Coda! <laughs> this is also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not much room over here. <laughs> okay, here. Tell you what, why don't you step there? I will there, take you this. Take over the camera yes, for I'm comfortable with these guys. I just worked with them yesterday. These are my two operant cats. This is Lakota. And this is Sue. These are their normal temperaments. You did very well last night with, oh, I know. You did such a good job yesterday with your operant conditioning. Yeah, I know. Handsome boy, Coda Coda. Coda Coda. Yeah, there you go. Good job, buddy. And Jennifer, you are right. When they realize that it's not gonna work out, they find a new home. Sue and... Sue many times Sue, is, Sue. hey, here's a field, go running. Sue Sue. Hi, sweet girl. You're okay. Hey. Coda Coda. You did such a good job. You did such a good job. Yes, you did. 
All right, good job, guys. Good job, babies. All right, your keepers will be by to let you together in a little bit. Now, these two are actually separated by a guillotine door here, you'll see. Oh, good. good. This door is closed. Asking. Now, they are separated at feeding time. This is so that way, like, if Lakota eats all his food and Sue's a little bit slower of an eater, which she is, he can't get done, gobble down all his food, and then jump over to her side and steal her food. This way we're making sure that everybody gets to eat their food at their own pace. So you will notice that if they are couples, um, first and foremost, they have been spayed and or neutered so that we were not making babies, but also that at feeding time, they are separated in order to prevent people from stealing another person's food. Because Andy has brothers. He knows what that's like. Oh, uh, Karen said, look what happened to Des. You know, probably dumped and... Uh Des Serval. Yep, we'll yep. go see him in a couple minutes. Yeah, and he was, was he, he was dumped in the desert, wasn't he? Uh, he was dumped somewhere. He was found, you know, wandering in Arizona somewhere. Yeah. I, right. I always think of Arizona as like a, like a whole place. When somebody <laughs> says Arizona, I just think sand. All right, we're going to do Here. this. Gonna I just want to do this. And we're going to be very quiet because we're going to go see Dryden. He's down on this platform. So I'm going to not talk here. I'm going to ask you not to get too close. But we're going to go say hi to Dryden, which is another one of our bobcats. He's a little bit shy, but he's very beautiful. Hi, Bud Bud. <laughs> I know. Hi, Bud Bud. Yes, you are very scary. Yes, you are very scary. You have the best rough of anybody I've ever met. Try it. Hi, handsome. Good job, buddy. Good job. Look at you. Good job. Good job, pups. Good job. Good job, kid. Bye, bubs. Bye, bud, bud. Happy Catter Day, Cindy. Okay, let's go find Small Girl. And then let's see some servals. So we're going to go see probably one more bobcat. And then we'll go say hi to some servals. So for those of you that are curious or interested in learning more about servals or seeing servals, we'll definitely go see some of them. Any questions or comments or anything for me? I would like you like to take you out to dinner later. You want to take me out for dinner? Hot, hot, hot date. You want to take me on a date? No, no well, I'm, I'm thinking like uh, the grill in our backyard. <laughs> we'll have some vegan hot dogs. <laughs> Here, um, can I give this to you? I have to run to the restroom real quick. I'm just gonna go down to the leopard lounge. So someone had asked for like a sign tour. Oh, uh, let's do that. Yeah, you know what? I'll do the sign tour while uh, while Bridge is doing that. All right, I'll be right back. I'm I'll, just gonna run to the restaurant. I'll work my way kind of over there. Okay. Okay, let's yeah, do. Twenty minutes Okay, let's do a sign tour. All right, so uh, over here we have a uh, you know danger sign. Right now, uh, the yellow here doesn't make a certain shirt color. So I. Th Thing. And now keep in mind, I'm not a keeper um, and you guys aren't going back behind the barricades anyway. So hopefully I get this right. Uh, the yellow signs designate that yellow shirts are allowed to go back there. So yellow shirt keepers. Um, so there's that. Now, as we go up in shirt color, up in cat size and danger level, uh, these signs will change. But uh, but as you can see, some of the witty spelling we have around here. Uh, yesterday I was typing an email to uh, Carol and uh, <laughs> My computer spell checked perfect to P U R R F E C T. Um, yeah, I need to fix that. Um, <laughs> I could see some of my uh, colleagues going, w Where did you learn how to spell, Andy? Uh, all right, so that's that. All right, let's see. We have uh, this one here. All right, Bridgie's name's on this. Thank you, Janice. This is quite cool. Somebody did that for Bridgie. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, but uh, but you'll see sponsored plaques around that will uh, just, just, I guess, uh, just have the person's name on it, right? I mean, if you sponsored it, we want to be able to uh, to throw that out there. So if you're, you're a supporter, there, there you go. Uh, and I know there's a dollar amount that goes.
the web page. Every so often you'll see these. And, and obviously we throw the signs up there for uh, 